scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. As powerful as Jesus is and was, there were three prophets that played a role in his life for him to actually complete his assignment. Number one, Simeon the prophet. Number two, Anna the prophetess. Number three, John the Baptist. Jesus, the word incarnate. Did he pray? Yes. Did he fast? Yes. Did he study? Yes. Was he under the scribes for learning? Yes. You would check all the lists, yet he would have failed woefully. And even with all that prophetic, he almost aborted destiny. If all you have is an intelligent mind, then there will be a very painful lesson you will learn as you sojourn this wicked world. If all you have is a good heart that is profitable but not enough for you to flourish, let me tell you the truth. Flourishing and thriving is proof of mastery that you have learned all the laws that keep things in place. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking at people today who right from the start of this conference listened attentively to speaker after speaker, intelligent facilitator after another, and most of you have learned all kinds of phenomenal principles that stand true eternally because they are derived from the truth of scripture. But I bring you a dimension to add to all that you have heard. The prophetic is a mysterious advantage mysterious advantage did you hear what i said mysterious advantage an advantage whose explanation does not relate with logic i am a product of prophecy i know what prophecy can do i have seen what it has done to people's lives if it were by the natural course of life some of us would be far behind where we are today Prophecy is an accelerator. It can push men. It can make things become. It can make things happen. I'm saying this because as we wrap up in the next one or two minutes, we're going to take time to pray, even if it's just three minutes. I want you to cry. Lord, my beast, I've learned the principles. Listen, you can put the store and employ staff, but only God brings customers. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Is that in your Bible? He said it is vain to wake up early. What is wrong with waking up early? Waking up early is a principle of diligence, but it is still vain to wake up early. What is sleeping in the night? That is the most graphic representation of diligence when you wake up in the night. He says, yet you will still eat the bread of sorrow for waking up early. The man who wakes up early in the morning and sleeps late in the night, that should be the most prosperous person. Unfortunately, there are factors beyond your control. Paul said, I desire to come to you even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. So based on your diligence, there are certain customers who should come based on the natural cause of diligence, except for the fact that because you have vowed that your money will promote the kingdom. When you were praying, it was not only God that had you, Satan had you too. And said, what did you say your money would do next year for advanced conference? That souls will be won, destinies will be changed, and while they are coming, 
there is a diversion in the spirit. He says, I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I have seen many visions in my life and I have seen many times where based on God's prophetic calendar, certain things should have already happened in the lives of people. So the lag is not God's desire that from prophecy to manifestation, demons and all kinds of factors interrupted the pace of the arrival and God knew that and that was the reason why he programmed the prophetic advantage. Can I tell you the truth? Even unbelievers know the power of the prophetic. Most of them will tell you they did well, but they will not tell you who spoke over them. By the privilege of God, God's grace, every man of God here, woman of God, you have had opportunities where you pray for unbelievers. You say, I hope you know it's in Jesus' name. They say, yes. They don't come in as businessmen. They come in as wise men. They know that if all I have is the ability to buy and sell, I will still fail. And you see somebody who is an unbeliever, in Jesus' name, he shouts, Amen. I don't believe in that Jesus, but at least I believe in his servant. And they get up and mysterious things begin to happen in their lives. You see, the prayer platform, or what Reverend Sam is doing with the transforming church, or what every servant of God here in their various expressions, you would be lying to just think it was all by the physical keys there alone. It's not true. There is a prophetic advantage. And somebody, God has insisted that in this conference, you will not go back the way you came. Is this a good place for us to pray? Will you pray? Shout it, say, Father. Come on, pray. This is a praying church. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, that prophetic advantage that propels me to the next level, let it rest upon my life. Someone go ahead and pray. Pray seriously and pray with power. Pray for your business. Pray for your ministry. My God, the power of God is in this place. The prophetic advantage. The prophetic advantage in addition to my ability in addition to diligence i am rooted in the word rooted in prayer rooted in diligence in addition to an altered perception for good let your hand rest upon me let your hand rest upon me Shabarakata. pray for one minute hallelujah in the name of jesus first chronicles chapter 4 please 9 to 10. honestly i sense such a strong anointing in this place if you believe the prophetic word that is coming upon you tonight you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes first chronicles chapter 4 9 and 10. now jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called him Jabez why because I bore him in pain next verse and Jabez called unto the God of Israel saying everybody listen oh that thou wouldest bless me and do what enlarge my territory the third expression is our next prayer point and that your hand will be upon me do you know what happened to a man when the hand of the Lord came upon him? He ran. He didn't walk. He ran. And he overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. Say, Father. One more time, shout it. Say, Father. Tonight and forever, may your hand rest upon me. 
rest upon my ministry rest upon my business someone open your mouth and begin to pray let your hand rest upon me in a way beyond confusion let your hand rest upon me let it be well with me let your hand rest upon 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 me spirit of the living god be the advantage in addition to my skill in addition to my intellect in addition to all the provisions that are available to succeed hallelujah hallelujah please look at me I want you to listen. Please listen. Reverend Sam, when God made man, God made man complete. The, the way God responded to a complete man was the same way God responded to dry bones. All of them needed speakings on them. You would think because Adam was already complete, there would be no need to prophesy on him. The same way God spoke to a whole being, Adam, was the same way prophecy was made upon dry bones. Whether you are complete, having everything in place, or having nothing, you will never outgrow the power of prophecy. What was wrong with Adam? A man who came directly, the creativity of God himself, the artistry of God displayed at his finest. Would you need to add anything to such a man? His mind, brain, body, biology, everything was in place. And yet God said, this man is not complete. Every factor in place. The business is well built. All the factors, advertising, branding, marketing, creativity, relational principles. But it will lie like Adam. Something is still missing. And then when he sees dry bones, he still says in the economy of heaven, it is still the same thing. How do you have to prophesy fruitfulness? For something that is already systemic to be fruitful the brain is already there the hands are already there let me tell you the truth i believe in excellence but excellence will never replace nor negate the power of prophecy there are many of you who are surprised why things are not working the truth is that everything to make it work is there you are diligent you have read the books but there is a factor and this is what by the spirit of God I want to truly speak over someone I stand with all humility and I tell you this I am a beneficiary of the power of prophecy when the hand of God comes upon your life it becomes unmistakable unmistakable help that woman unmistakable the Lord granted his servant to put this meeting, even though it cuts across an array of fields and professions, let me speak to you, my dear business people. Do not allow intellect make you downplay the value of spiritual things. Proverbs chapter 3, from verse 5 to 7 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and to lean not unto your own understanding. Then he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. That is the cancer that kills intelligent people. Wise in their own eyes. You can build a boat. You can build the ark. 
but only God brings the animals. The formula to attract animals from the bush on their own has not been given to any man. There are certain things in your success factor, your success equation that only resides with God. You cannot receive it outside of him. It is his presence. Are you ready to receive? Years ago when I read Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently please help two people for me now that shout under the anointing I just saw fire just coming on two people that fire and the Lord is telling me that that person you have a prophetic ministry it's a prophetic ministry a prophetic ministry and it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command you this day please listen it says that the Lord shall exalt you Reverend Sam when I saw that word I was in one room I believed it exalt you above all nations of the earth your the color of your skin notwithstanding listen it is unto you according to what you choose to believe you listen to nonsense you will become what you are hearing did you hear what i said it is your responsibility to culture your perceptions for the sake of where god is taking you the bible says in genesis 12 verse 3 in thee shall all nations be blessed i am a blessing this is what you must believe it i am a blessing yes that you shall lay up gold as dust I believe it all you will never listen I wish I had time would have spoken about finances a bit reject poverty hear what I'm telling you now reject poverty as a personal mission reject it this is not the issue of cannot reject it you will never be able to do much for the kingdom if you're incapacitated by the privilege of God's grace, we have conferences happening across the continents. And I cannot tell you the monies that are needed in millions of dollars to run these things. Except you are a thief. And even if you are that, you will still suffer. What is on your head is what controls what is around your life. And I'm releasing my faith with Reverend Sam. I know we still have tomorrow. But I want to speak from the depth of my heart. This is why I came here tonight. Hallelujah. That's why I came tonight. It is from what we have received that we give. We don't know everything. At least for myself, I don't know everything. I don't have everything. But there are things we have. Believe me. Believe me. When God has given you something, you have it. It's as simple and honest and sincere as that. Father in the name of Jesus over someone's life and over someone's destiny I speak to you standing upon the grace of God's servant here in addition to the many vessels that have been here in the name that is above all names first let me start it this way every force that has sat on your destiny and your glory and will not allow you blossom Maraka we dislodge those forces now we dislodge those forces now. We dislodge those forces now. Hey, the Bible says, By you, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. I place grace upon your life. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. I prophesy over your destiny. Run like Elijah. Overtake the chariots of Ahab in the name of Jesus. Run like Elijah. Ten years in one year. One year in one month. I prophesy to you. Ten years in one year. I shift you by prophecy. Enter a new season. Enter a new season. Enter a new season. Enter a new season. Enter a new season.
Listen. Please hear me. You are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value. You are as relevant as the people who attest to the presence of your value. The reason why we honor global brands today is because there are enough men who have attested to the fact that those brands are valuable enough. You are as valuable as the presence of the people who attest to your value. They cannot reward you if they do not know you are there. Publicity is first a spiritual matter. There are aids, social media and the rest. But there is a hear ye him anointing. And if that grace is not on you, you can do all you can and nobody will hear you. Is someone ready to carry that grace? The grace that God has placed on his servant, placed on the men and the women of God here that will cause the nations, even the ends of the earth to hear you. For as many who will shout amen and believe this, carry that grace now. For your products, carry that grace now. For your vision, carry that grace now. For your ministry, carry that grace now. Son of man, what seest thou? I see four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judea, against in the name of Jesus. Every horn that has risen to shut your voice, to shut your relevance so that you will not be heard. We bury those voices now. We bury those horns now. I say it again, the transforming church. We bury those voices now. You're my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I'm wrapping up. Something is resting on your life. Hallelujah. I'm led in my spirit to speak over two areas and then we're done. Can I pray for your finances? Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. This finance thing, ba. This finance thing. If God does not help you, you will sit down one day and cry like a baby, no matter how old you are. Did you hear what I said? You will not cry because you don't have food to eat. You will cry because you are watching prophecy limited by lack of resources. There are many books today that would have blessed the nation, staring revivals. Money stopped that move. There are many apostolic and prophetic voices, evangelical pastoral voices that should be heralding his message to the nations, but they are incapacitated by resources. You want to see attack? Let the grace for wealth start coming close to you. You will see more attack in your life. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Please hear me. I'm saying this because for someone, if you don't get angry with lack, you may sit down and have visions all you can. And yet you will go and meet the Lord. You will not do one tenth of what he has told you to do. I'm wrapping up, Reverend Sam. When God called me, I listened to late Pat Robertson, 700 Club. And he prayed a prayer as a young man. He said when God called him, naive, not knowing many things. He said, Lord, give me three things. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I took out time to pray that prayer and to study them. Then when I came to the subject of favor, I saw that naturally speaking, I did not have any advantage that I could lean on. 
and I listened to Dr. Mike Modok. May God bless him. Bless him. Thankfully, we still have him alive. This man spoke about favor. And I began to learn certain things. I took one month to pray. And I said, God, don't send me with a message alone. I said, Lord, you have to help me and show me. Show me your help, even in this area. You have given me an apostolic call. It is an expensive call. Financially expensive. Not just attacks from the spirit. Even if nobody attacks you, you will still not move forward if you don't have resources. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Thankfully, I was so honored to have Reverend Sam with us at Manchester last year. It was a surprise, just like Pastor Jerry was saying. I mean, he's not just done that to Pastor Jerry. I think he's done that to almost everyone within his circle. That sacrifice. He was over at Manchester. And the Lord gives us an instruction to put something at the largest indoor arena. And he said, no, collect offering. There's nothing wrong with free. And then to pay, to, I mean, to, to feed all the workers. Over 2,000, 2,500 people to feed them. And he said, don't collect offering. Don't make one mention. I said, God, but giving is one of the ways people rise. He said, no, there is a narrative about church within the European space that I want to use this conference to correct. Obedience is hard when you are poor. You believe whatever you want to believe. I will tell you this as, as sincere and as modest as I can be. I'm saying that because your story is about to change. Let me tell you this. There are many visions today. By God's prophetic hand upon your life, you are supposed to have gone far. There are younger ministers, younger apostolic and prophetic voices that are rising, but you are incapacitated. The problem is not lack of grace. You have the content, you are disciplined, you have character, people of consecration, but you are pegged in one place. Right now, the unbelieving community have bought O2 Arena in UK they bought Excel and they banned Christian activities there completely while that is happening we are here praying in tongues and that is good but very soon they will buy up everything and push us out you see let me tell you the truth you must adopt you see Jesus the model had a treasurer and he did not shy away from the issue of finances there are times, there were times when they came to embarrass him and they said, you claim to be a preacher of righteousness but you are wanting in the area of finances. He didn't argue. He got the money and showed us from that example how to enjoy peace in life. To give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. There are things that belong to Caesar. The moment you are serving God, Caesar will come to embarrass you. Embarrass your integrity and say you are preaching, you are calling, you've not paid your tax. You know, preparing for a conference in UK and Canada, Reverend Sam, you know this better than all of us. I mean, you cannot imagine the things you have to pay for. Insurance, seats, car park. Huh? Once you are gathering a crowd in excess of 10,000 uh, 10, people, there are certain, oh dear. By the time they are done with you, you will go back for a retreat and ask whether God really sent you. I mean what I'm saying. We exhausted the doors that were open for Canada and we had to now get another 5,000 overflow. And once we did, they had to renegotiate the contract as if the first one was null and void. Ah, but in Nigeria, they can say, okay, since you have done this, love Nigeria, oh, it's not that bad. We are still kind. The kind of help that is needed for you to go forward. I'm speaking to a businessman. I'm speaking to someone in ministry. The kind of help that only God can bring to men. Honestly, I prophesy to you here on this altar, beginning from now and the next 90 days, if you have the faith to believe, write it down and believe. Begin to enjoy tremendous supplies. Tremendous supplies. I prophesy to you tremendous supplies. I place prophetic words upon your head. Let help us arise.
let financiers arise let favor conduits arise in the name of Jesus Christ I forbid you from begging and borrowing finances will not limit your becoming finances will not limit your rising finances will not limit your driving you will lay up gold as dust in the name of Jesus Christ Reverend Sam, will you lend me one minute to speak over those in debt? I'm hearing in my spirit debt. Debt like owing. There are some of you who are neck deep in troubles. There are preachers you are behind. And if God does not help you, you will plunge into depression. Every time people got into debt, it was not business that brought them out. It was prophecy. Whether it's lack of food in Samaria or the axe head that fell, at last, master, it was borrowed. It was prophecy that brought them out. I want to speak to someone. Whether it is personal debt, I've been in debt before. I know the inconvenience that I... There are people who are not sick, but the trouble on their head is better to even be sick. Hallelujah. Can I pray that for you? Because you need to come out of it. The embarrassment, the shame, and the reproach I tell you, being in debt will strip you of your dignity. People who have no, no audacity to talk to you will tear you down because you are in debt. I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Standing on the graces that are here represented, I decree and declare within the next 90 days, by the wisdom of God, by the mercy of God, by the gift of man, by the ministry of helpers, by all godly means, Come out of debt in the name of Jesus. Come out of begging and borrowing in the name of Jesus. You will owe no man nothing but love. At least at a personal level. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I sense in my heart that for someone else, one of the reasons why you have gotten into debt is because of greed. Please forgive me and don't feel insulted. We're wrapping up. But it's something the Lord is putting in my heart. Because there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat. Your seed has never been part of prophecy. Never been part of advancing anything kingdom. Sometimes I feel embarrassed doing this. But you see, let me tell you the truth. There is nobody who prospers in the kingdom if you are not a giver. The attacks on an unbeliever is not the same attack on you. The unbeliever can thrive with certain principles because they are largely serving Babylon. You are vowed to serve the kingdom. Hallelujah. This man you see is not just a receiver. By the mercy of God, and I apologize if it sounds arrogant. Maybe the only thing I've not given is, is, is to remove my heart and remove the life and give. Don't just covet people's testimonies. This is why sometimes as inconveniencing as it is, it's good for pastors to tell people certain testimonies so they don't just pretend and assume. Sometimes it's inconveniencing because people mistaking them for pride. I have given seeds to the millions of dollars. Let me tell you, I'm saying it to your face. Don't think I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I, I almost feel like I just sinned against God now. But it's important to tell you. Don't just think that, uh, no, no. A gentleman came like about a month ago who had been so blessed, prayed for him in Ghana. God expanded him. He's become a millionaire. He traveled from Ghana and came with, was it ten hundred thousand dollars or hundred and fifty to come and give me. And when he came, I blessed him and the Lord said, uh -uh, this is not for you. Let him take it back to Koinonia account in the U.S. and deposit it there. You think I don't know what to do with a hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Even if I don't know, I'm surrounded by too many wise people to help me know what to do with it. Your heart for God, oh, I don't want to deceive. Let's not just shout amen and wrap up and go away. If your heart is still closed, I tell you, your financial gate will be closed eternally. Hallelujah. I'm saying this to you so that you know that behind certain extraordinary results, there are things that men do. Whatever you cannot part with deserves to rule over you. 
one of the ways that God conquers materialism and carnality is to give you prophetic instructions to give. I always ask why God will insist that people will give. I'm not asking you to give, not necessarily. But I'm just telling you that one of the ways God prunes the dominion of material things over you is that occasionally in your life, he will give you instructions that you almost want to cast that voice away. He does it not because of the money at all. He does it because he wants what has taken his place in your heart to die. Let me pray my last prayer now. Pastor Jerry shared it very powerfully. We adjust to systems and structures, but we never bend. Some of you are bent too far. You would rather leave God than to be poor. Now you've gone too far. That one is dangerous. You would rather push Jesus out of the scene to get fame. That one is dangerous. Are we together? The moment anything fights the place and the position of God in your life, you are already at a danger zone. I can tell you that. I'm praying for someone here who you have lost your love for Jesus. I know this is advanced conference, but please allow me to wrap up with this prayer. You have lost touch with spiritual things. Maybe because you really want to make money, you want fame, you want all of these things. I can tell you the truth. When you take Jesus out of the equation of your life, your life remains barren and empty. And most people just say yes mechanically, but their lives show that Jesus is far, somewhere in their space outside. God is calling us deeper. The strength of the believer is the position you have placed God in. Not just that he's in your heart. Where in your heart is he? You can be in my house and I can leave you somewhere outside. You are in my house but you are still outside. You can be in my house and I drop you somewhere at the visitor's lounge. You are in my house but there are inner chambers in every house. And people you treasure, you take them there. There are many of you, Jesus is around your life, not in your heart. He's not outside but he's around. Somewhere joining the queue after money and fame before him. God is calling you now that in all your pursuit, you need to redirect your passion. Can I speak a word of restoration for someone? You've lost your fire. You've lost your spiritual texture. You've lost your zeal for spiritual things. And God sent you to advance conference tonight. I agree with Reverend Sam on your behalf. In the name that is above all names, I decree the grace that draws men to a depth of intimacy with God beyond money, beyond material things, beyond ministry, beyond fame. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. May that grace rest upon you. Everyone wave your hands and I want you to begin to pray. Lord, I desire you like never before. Beyond money, let me find you. Beyond fame, let me find you. Beyond progress, let me find you. Wherever I've lost you at any point in my life, I obtain grace. Let me find the true north of my destiny. Let me find you again. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.